In this video, we're going to be looking at reactor blocks, and we're going to be picking up very much from where the walkthrough in the magazine finishes. In that walkthrough, we've, uh, over six steps, built a little sort of baby synthesizer, and you can see how it's arranged right here. What we've basically got is a note input source, which is taking uh, trigger notes from a MIDI keyboard, and that's sending out um, to the pitch input of an oscillator, which in turn is being sent onto a filter, both of which are coming from Monarch, and uh, we're then sending uh, the sound onto a VCA amplifier before it's then sent to the output. Now that sound would be just a constant block of noise if it weren't for the fact that the amplifier is being shaped by an envelope. So this uh, output here from the envelope is controlling the VCA. Now what that basically means is that the way that it's set up, you can see that the envelope output is being sent to modifier A, and if we click on A here, we can see that the overall volume level is off, but that the overall level is being controlled a lot by the routing that's coming in from the envelope. So in other words, now I've got control over the attack time, the decay time, and the sustain time. So if I play a note, we should hear it. And if we make it a bit brighter here, we can hear it more clearly. And of course, you can see how the level is affected by the envelope shape. So if I was to make the attack longer, we'll see that level climb. And if we were to um, set a slightly longer decay time and a lower sustain level, we'll see the arrow make its way up to the top, back down round, and then hold at the sustain level. And that's the shape of that particular envelope. And obviously we can uh, have that designed however we like. So for something quite punchy and percussive now, I'm going to uh, produce something like this. But obviously if we wanted something which was going to hold for a bit longer, we'd need the sustain level. Okay, so how can we go further? How can we look at how to make this synth patch a whole lot more interesting than its sort of basic setup as it is right now? Well, one simple way would be that we could connect, for example, the mod wheel output to the mod A input of the filter. What that means is that if I then click on A within the filter, I have a chance to decide how my um, mod wheel is going to affect the sound here. So I'm going to set it up so that the basic cutoff uh, point is here and then you can see through this routing here that it's going to get a whole lot brighter whenever I open up the cutoff frequency. So now we've got the mod wheel doing something as well so that's nice. However we could go further with the filter. Let's look at bringing in a brand new module. This time I'm going to um, go into the bento box and I'm going to grab an LFO. So if I introduce this new module, here it is down here, what I could do would be to route its output, the LFO's output, into the filter on mod B. Every single um, source here you can see has got a pair of modulation inputs. And on mod B, what I've got a chance to do now is to decide how this sound is going to be set up. And again, you can see there are some assignments for it already. So this time we're looking at B, and again, the cutoff frequency is going to be affected. And so is resonance. You can see that because the level here on the resonance control is inverted, it's upside down, it's going the other way to the cutoff frequency above it. And there's some FM modulation going on here as well. So by playing with the LFO settings, we should be able to hear the effect that it is having on the filter. Okay, let's go back to the first shape, the little sort of gentle cycling shape. And what we're going to do is we're going to significantly sort of back down the amount that all of that's happening. So we've got a sound which has got a little bit of LFO control, but not all that much. 
Okay, let's see what that sounds like. So now we've got the filter cutoff being controlled by two things, this sort of constant LFO, and of course we've still got our mob wheel assignment as well. Okay, that's working nicely. Next, let's disconnect these two outputs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these two wires. And if I were to play a note now, it wouldn't make any noise because the output isn't hooked up. And instead I'm going to come into rounds and I'm going to select a reverb. Let's give this whole sound some sort of spatial treatment. So I'm going to take the outputs into here and then we're going to hook up the outputs from here into there. So somewhere up here above, we now are going to find that there is a rounds reverb. There it is. So it's kind of in the wrong place right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it along here to the end so that it's kind of towards the end of the chain. And now we should be in a position to hear some reverb on this sound. Don't forget as well that I could chain the outputs from the envelope or from the LFO into the uh, mod inputs for the reverb as well so that we could actually have some of the LFO shape effect different parameters within there as well. But for now, I'm just going to kind of keep this as a global effect. So that's working nicely as well. But what I want to do is to make this sound a whole lot thicker than it is right now. So what I'm actually going to do is to grab another Monarch um, oscillator and we'll create a two oscillator synth rather than one. So if we come back into here and we come and grab another Monarch oscillator, again it's just put it over there, so let's come back in here and what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to uh, put these two things next to each other and we'll just rename this one. This is going to be oscillator two. Now in order to sort of really hear these um, sort of blended, what I'm going to need is a little uh, sort of mixer and I'm going to bring a mixer in over here, which will allow me to blend the outputs from these two oscillators. Now, what this is actually going to mean is that I'm going to have to disconnect this wire here and instead send the outputs into there. Let's just delete that wire so that our mixer is receiving its input directly from the first oscillator. And then we can chain the second oscillator into input two. Now, this oscillator is also going to need a pinch input because I need it to come in from the synth. So hopefully now we're going to be hearing both of those. And again, let's put these two next to each other so that we can actually hear them side by side and see their settings as well. So now hopefully we've got a two oscillator synthesizer, which uh, should be clear when we play some notes and we begin to hear um, these two um, sort of frequencies playing back at once. They're both playing the same waveform at the moment. So it's going to be the frequency that's going to be uh, allowing us to hear these as separate things. Now, at the moment, we can't hear those as two separate things because the mixer, which is over here on the right hand side, has only got the output for oscillator one turned up. So let's turn up oscillator two as well. And we can detune those nicely. And of course we can change waveform. Now what we've got is a more complex synth. We could add more oscillators, more effects, more routings to make this ever more complicated. But by checking out some of the presets which come with uh, reactor blocks, you'll now begin to see how some of their patchings work and how these um, modules can be chained together to create really interesting original instruments.